Are you ready for page two? <laughs> okay, here we go. I have prepped some, so I hope I remember what I'm doing. I have a lot of oddments of paper here, so I'm hoping I'll be able to get this album finished. <laughs> so what I have found is this. Now it's supposedly embossing powder. It does not emboss, I have tried, but I can use it with glue and it's the perfect colour match to the glitter on here. So I'm quite pleased with that. So what I should probably do is do a lot of stamping and embossing with black powder and then highlighting with the orange powder. So, page two. <laughs> Okay, you need to start off with, can I remember what I'm doing? No, I can't. Okay, so let's start off with a full size, make sure it's eight and a quarter this way. So if it's slightly off, Cut a bit off so it's eight and a quarter and the full size which is just over 11 and a half you want to score it at <sighs> seven eighths of an inch one inch nine and a quarter inches nine and five eighths of an inch so basically you you're making yourself an eight and a quarter inch square with a one eighth of an inch gusset either side of those score lines and you want to mitre the edges now have I actually used that I don't know <laughs> this may not end may not end up going exactly the same right you need two that are eight and a quarter by nine and a half and you want to score these at half an inch four and five eighths of an inch okay uh, eight and three quarters of an inch and nine inches why does that not seem right? I wonder if I did it from this side. Would it be easy? No, it's exactly the same. <laughs> Half an inch. Oh, I see. Half an inch, three quarters of an inch. No, that still doesn't work out. Take my first measurements and I'll explain how I did this. You need two of those because they're going to be facing in opposite directions. So let's have a look what I did with this one. So the thing is I kept on changing my mind about the score lines so they're all over the place. Okay, so you need two of these. Ignore that one for now. This is what we're doing. We're doing it at one inch. No, we're not. Scrap that, start again. You need two of these. <laughs> You want to score them at half an inch, four, done it the same here, four and five eighths of an inch, eight and three quarters, and nine inches. I obviously knew what I was doing. It seems to fit. Okay, so you want two of those because. And then what I've done is I took the middle score line, so it's folded almost in half. Then the end score line that's showing up at the top measured five inches down on that score line and marked it from the corner here. I marked five inches up from the bottom and then I joined up the two and cut it. 
okay so measure five inches down five inches up so that the lower mark is in the middle and I did that on both but then you have to make sure that you fold one one way and one the other so, so that you will get a mirror image okay oh this is going to be a difficult one already you then need one piece that is nine and a quarter inches by recall it eight inches on the eight inch side score it at five inches and on the nine and a quarter inch side score it at half an inch and eight and three quarters so you're just scoring in half an inch each side each side you then want a bit for the back so you want a piece that is eight and a quarter by three inches eight and a quarter by three inches and last but not least you will need a piece that is full size so just over 11 and a half by eight and a quarter and let's start with <laughs> this one so the one that is full size where you scored it at one inch and nine and a quarter and uh, nine yeah nine and a quarter and nine nine and a quarter I think I must have also done it at nine and a half no I didn't Good at one inch right I'm pretty sure I scored it seven eight seven inch one inch uh, nine and a quarter and nine and three eighths that sounds about right to me okay so yeah, you've got the eight and a quarter inches with the one eighth of an inch gusset on each side. So fold to make sure you can see your gussets. So there's one there. A nice little gusset there. And one on this side. Do I need a gusset on that side? Oh, I ripped my paper. I think I do need a gusset on that side. What a plug I've got myself into. Right, so on the larger flap, I'm going to put tape on the three sides because you're going to have this as a tuck spot. If you want to have a piece in the middle, you can also and have it as like a double tuck spot pocket. Next, you are going to want the piece that is full length and um, <laughs> my mind's gone blank uh, scored at three and a half inches or eight and a quarter inches scored at eight and a quarter inches that one okay now because you are using this this is going over the top of here now because this is going to be a tuck spot and it is attached to this you want to mat this bit first so we're just going to attach this to this okay so you've got your one piece with the small flap at the bottom and the large flap at the top you then have one piece with the large flap and you're going to mat 
sorry, I'm waiting for it to focus again. You're going to mat with the flap facing the flap closest to you and facing upwards. Turn it over and mat this side. Bear in mind that okay, when you lift this up, you want if it's a directional paper, you want to make sure that it's directional this way. Okay. Okay. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. Now, if you want this to be a full pocket, you're going to have to add some little hinges at the sides. Oh, my cats are fighting outside. Uh, if not, mat this bit first because you don't want to not be able to put your papers in. So, mat it first. If, like me, you're going straight down with the papers. So, we have got the flap at the bottom with a small one eighth of an inch gusset. I will get that gusset, I really will. And a one eighth of an inch gusset at the top. I'm going to release the tape. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. This is all because it took me two days to upload the first video and then it failed completely. I had to remake it. I'd already prepped this and now I can't remember what I was doing with this because I didn't make any notes. <laughs> so, release backing. Release backing. <laughs> Add glue. Remember, you're not covering your gusset. You are only wanting to cover below the gusset. So my gusset's here. So I don't want to cover up my gusset. So I'm going to very carefully, hopefully not get my head in the way, and go from edge to edge. And straight down. Am I happy with that? Just about. Mm, maybe. Am I happy enough to rip it open? <laughs> yes, I am. I want it exact. I don't want it showing. So, let's try that bit again. better. Now I'm happy. <laughs> okay. Okay, first bit done. Now, I want to put on this bit which for some reason I've already put paper on, I don't know why. This is not a direct to paper pocket. It is just, so what I've done is I should, so on this I have cut between the score lines of the, and then mitered each edge. So I've mitered from the edge of the score line out and each corner on the larger flap I've put the hinges backwards on the smaller flap I've put the hinges forwards and then folded it up okay so ignore this bit here so this one inch well seven eighths of an inch plus one eighth of an inch gusset ignore that and on the large side of the paper, you want to put a bit of score tape at the bottom or tape, glue, whatever, and on both sides of the hinges, because this is going to be a straight to page pocket. So 
let's take off the tape backing on that one I'm very flustered <laughs> They started putting the bricks up today. They put the... <sighs> Sorry, that's just my paper trimmer falling over. They put the Salcon bricks up, partly. And the red bricks are now going up, partly. So in a few weeks, I may have a house again. Instead of just uh, a few bits of outer walls. <laughs> inner walls. Not outer walls, inner walls. Okay, so let's get glue on... tape bits there now once again you don't want to go over your gusset you need to free your gusset keep your gussets free and carefully <laughs> put this on so you've got a pocket here and a flap. Now then. Why have I got that there? I don't need that there. This flap's open anyway. Why did I put that there? Oh, because it needs to flap open. <laughs> okay. So, next, see what I mean, flustered, next, so the tabs that are now facing inwards, I still don't need that there, do I? I don't need that there, no, flustered, peel off your tape backing, put on glue, and very carefully put your eight and a quarter by three inches bit of glue along the bottom because <laughs> you're making a pocket so place this on to here and you don't need this bit do you no so what a lot of flapping you can take this bit off you don't need it I don't know why I thought I needed that. Unless you want to put in an extra, extra pocket. I suppose you could put in an extra pocket up to here. That would be quite nice. I'm going to leave that there for a minute and see if I want an extra, extra pocket. Okay, next. I will go over these again. So... Once again, <clears throat> it's nine and a half inches. You want to score it, and it's eight and a quarter inches this way. You want to score it at half an inch, four and five eighths of an inch, eight and three quarters, and nine inches. Oh, the other way, half an inch, three quarters of an inch, five and seven eighths of an inch, and nine inches. <laughs> okay. This quarter of an inch is your gusset. Okay, so you've got a quarter of an inch gusset. So you've got quite a wide gusset that side. This is going to be made into a pocket. So if you fold your gusset back, fold this forward, hiding those tabs. And once again, with the crease at the end, so this is the middle-ish of the paper, measure five inches down on that side, measure five inches up from this side, Join up your 
little marks and cut it straight across. Do that for both of them because you can just fold this one then in the opposite direction. So basically you want them so that you have one in one direction and one in the other and if you do it five inches and five inches it will be even. Okay so that's your two of these with your quarter of an inch gusset. Okay what I have now done is this is a tag from the paper line and I got a brad a split pin squashed the head so it was almost flat and put it through there marked halfway and just put it through the whole thing I put a bit of sellotape on the back first and I put it through the whole thing so that it can move and on this side there's a magnet inside there so there's a magnet in between the paper and the card and that's my next magnet that's going down so the split pin is through there I don't want the paper to catch on here but I do want this to be able to turn and if I turn the paper which is why it's at the back here rather than squashed in between the pattern paper which the glue just gets in the way so I want this to be able to turn freely so first of all I'm going to squash that down the sellotape is just there to stop it splitting any further and I've got a piece of card I would have cut a circle out if I'd thought about it and had time but I didn't and I'm going to put this over the back of here really burnish down those edges and this is enough space for this to turn freely so I'm going to put this down first this is just the way I do it because like I said I want to be able to move this freely I don't want to to um to get it caught it needs to move freely and it does <clears throat> and it wouldn't move that freely if I put it in between the pattern paper and the card so I'm just going to really burnish especially that top bit so that it's not going to get in the way when I put um, when I put anything in the pocket right this bit here which is the top half of the pocket you can cut away you don't need this piece so on both pieces move this out of the way I'm just going to cut that flap off and this is the flap that when I put it out the center line here has got the lower mark on it so it's five inches from the top the outer edge has got the other five inch mark on it from the bottom this time and this top flap here I'm going to cut off carefully <laughs> There we go. So there's one. Two. I always keep all my little spare bits of paper until the very end of the project, just in case I need to make any stoppers or anything like that. Okay, so I know this is in the middle. I should rub out my pencil mark, really. So any tab, and remember the magnet is sandwiched in between here. So, and that's just the other magnet. Okay, next, you want to mitre 
this little flap you got left at the end. Miter those edges so that when you tuck it in, it's not going to get in the way. And you want to put tape along this small flap. Not a lot of tape left. And I know I'm wasting it terribly. That was not very good. There. Better. Save those bits of paper because I'll need them to stick the magnets on. Okay. Sorry, this is where I suddenly look over onto the camera because my camera is over there. <laughs> what I can see, the picture that I see is that direction. <laughs> Just to make sure it's recording. Because <laughs> Sod's Law says that something is going to go drastically wrong, apart from me forgetting what I was going to do. Okay, we also need a little bit of tape at the bottom here. because nobody likes anything falling out of their bottom. You know, I'm never gonna stop saying it, okay? <laughs> okay. And because this is a hinged pocket, it has this flap here, you can decorate it after you put it together. A bit of glue for extra strength. And just in case I really make a hash up of it. Okay, and make sure that you're not covering your gusset. There we go. So there's one this side. Now the one where you've attached a piece of card, let's get that one together as well. So I always wonder, I can hear things going on outside and I wonder if you can hear them, how good this microphone picks things up. <laughs> I have a new microphone. I have a Yeti microphone. For some reason it doesn't want to work on my computer. <laughs> so I have this beautiful microphone sat there doing absolutely nothing. Okay, let's get this one put together. Okay, so these are going to go out and see I have put magnet here, I've written it in pencil magnet so that I know before I even decorate this I have to put a magnet on. Okay, so ignoring the gusset because you don't want to put anything on that gusset. I want to put some tape on the other side. <laughs> oh, I nearly did it, didn't I? Nearly. Okay. And obviously when you mitre the edges, don't mitre over the gusset, just mitre that last bit there. So your gusset is nice and flat at the ends here. No mitering on the gusset. Once again, I want to go on this side. So this is the side where the pocket is. Okay, and I'm turning it over to put the tape onto the hinge here. I had this so well planned that I completely forgot what I was doing. It's such a shame. <laughs> Ok, 
Okay, much of those edges. Okay, so you've got a nice half an inch gusset already. Get that out of the way. Okay, so let's grab my page here. So I've got tuck spot here that goes upside down. I've got a pocket here, a flap pocket here, another bit here that I may put another flap on because it's there. So I'm going to close all that up. I've got the other pocket that's going to go here. And I have a one eighth of an inch gusset here. It's a little bit bendy, that's okay. And now I want to put these on so that one goes on one side and I'm attaching them to the back. One goes on the other side and hopefully they meet in the middle. So if this is eight and a quarter, these need to be four and one eighth. That's why. I'm thinking, why have I done it four and one eighth? Of course I've done it four and one eighth. That's how it's supposed to be. <laughs> so before I put my mangot on here, I want to get these attached so I can get the right width. So, start with one side. What did I do with there? It is. Release my tape backing. Get some glue on because I'm not even going to attempt to do this without a bit of glue. Don't put it on your gusset because you don't want to, you don't want gluey gussets. <laughs> it's going to get worse, isn't it? Okay, and then. You want to bring that down, make sure it's all even. Oops. So that should be nicely glued there with my gusset nice and free. I do like a free gusset. So let's just get that burnished down. Okay. That's good. Okay, now let's get this one sorted. You're waiting for me to really muck it up now, aren't you? <laughs> You're like, she's out of practice, she's rambling on, her brain isn't what it used to be. <laughs> Which I shouldn't make jokes about my brain, should I? <laughs> but um, unless you haven't caught up with any of my other videos, I do have a brain problem. The blood vessels in my brain um, are closing up, a bit like vascular dementia, but I don't have strokes. So I have fits and I pass out and it's not much fun because I'm not allowed to go out on my own anymore. And I forget things like my children's names. <laughs> oh, I shouldn't laugh, should I? But well, if you don't laugh, what are you going to do? Because I sure as heck ain't going to cry. Okay, let's see how that goes together. That goes together really nicely. So what I'm going to do now is get the glue washed out of this side. There we go. Okay. Now if you need to, you can get a piece of paper tape and 
put these together where you want them to be just so you're holding it then I want to get a little bit of double-sided sticky tape onto my magnet peel off the backing level this up how I want it to be give it a really good squash because we know I don't have much luck with batteries batteries magnets magnets there we go okay now that that is on I am going to straight away uh, put the pattern paper over the top because if I don't I'll end up losing it or something so making sure that it's all even Stevens with the one next door <laughs> Just let me just put something in the back there so that I can see what I'm doing. That looks good to me. There we go. So that then holds that together. And you just have to take it over and then you can open it then you've got oh, a pocket here I better get this taped up before I forget because this is a straight to page pocket so um, it's got no flaps I already put my backing paper on and I do believe this is a it used to be called gorgeous but I think is it, is it Santoro the gorgeous girls I'm pretty sure it's a very old collection of paper I had those I've had that a few years as well <laughs> right what I'm also going to do is I found this in the sticker sheet not the sticker sheet the accessory sheet and I've just put a little bit of tape on three sides at the bottom there on the bottom half and I think I'm going to stick that there so it'll be like an extra little secret pocket so I can put things in there and obviously it's not going to cover that so that's probably going to go there yep that's got good hold so that's good okay so I'm going to pop that in there with my little bit there this opens up you've got a tuck spot here or two if you put the tape in the middle you have a pocket here and a pocket here and then an extra flap, this pocket flaps down to give you extra space. And then if you want, I am gonna put another, I'm gonna put another pocket here, or I'm gonna put something just up here. And I'm gonna have it right the way up, I think. Yeah. I'm going to have another pocket. I might actually put it just up to there. So I'm going to make a pocket to go here. So this one is from there. Five inches. So I'm going to make a five inch pocket so that it goes over the top of this one. So that'll flop down. Then that pocket flops down and you've got all this extra space. And that, I do believe... Is that so what I will do is I will show this fully decorated when I go on to page three 
and whether or not this obviously is optional if you don't want to put another pocket on there just cut this tab off but it gives you that option whether you want to do anything extra so there we go page two sort of so I'm having a look I'm sure I've got these now that isn't even inked uh, that's the inside that's the inside this is the outside papers here we go this is what I'm having on the outside these are from the six by six papers this is stuff I had this is from the accessory pack the accessory sheet this is gorgeous papers this and what's this one yep yeah, this is all from a sheet of the Teresa Collins papers and this was paper that I had in my stash from a long long time ago so I still do get that um, I might put a bit of glitter around here maybe on the pumpkins just to make it glittery but that is page two Thank you for watching. I hope I didn't make too many mistakes and I hope you understood it. Please stick around for page three and the rest and hopefully I'll get back in the swing of things and things will get better. Thanks everyone. Bye for now.